Hello and welcome to Miniature Adventures. I'm Big Lee and today I want to discuss demo game boxes, the essential items you need for running a demo game. So today's video is first of those inspired by responses to my call to arms a couple of weeks ago. I asked people for ideas and questions and you responded brilliantly. I've got a long list of really good questions and things to give me some think, think, things to think about um, uh, and plenty of subjects for future videos. So thank you very, very much. Um, yeah, I've now got a really long list, um, uh, going to exercise that grey matter. Um, so today's video is inspired by a question from Mr. Blue. Um, I'll put a link to, to him in the notes. Um, uh, I'm not de dealing with these questions in any particular order, just whatever takes my fancy in this week. And this week I'm doing Mr. Blue's question, which is, what is best to have in a demo game box? And in particular, he was saying, everything you need for an introductory game, uh, you can take it down a club. Or in, in my case, I would say, can you take it down a, to a demo show? Um, so that's what today's video is all about. This is a very topical question for me because I'm actually planning a demo game right now. Um, uh, Posties Rejects will be uh, putting on a demo game at Broadside in Genoa on the 4th of June. We do that show every year um, and we each take it in turns to, to run a game. And this year it was my turn. Um, I'll put a link to the uh, to Broadside in the notes as well. Um, and I did a few weeks ago um, about the Analog Hobbies Painting Challenge. And basically I did all of the painting that I needed for this demo game during the course of the challenge. Um, and, and what I'm going to be doing, I'm going to be doing a French Foreign Legion game set in early 20th century Algeria, on the border between Algeria and Morocco. Um, my theme is uh, Hollywood versus reality, uh, so it's part historical, part not. Um, again, uh, I'll put some details on this in a later video. Um, and the game's almost ready to play test, so I've got my demo box ready. Uh, so what's in it? Now, I've run several demo games before uh, with the Rejects and helped others do so. Um, so I have a very clear vision what I think needs to go in your demo game box. Um, and for me, that means three basic elements. Miniatures and train, obviously. Um, then you need an umpire's toolbox, dice counters, pens, etc. And I'll go into more detail on that in a second. And then some display material, signs, leaflets, and so on. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at each of those in a little bit more detail. Now the first element is an obvious one. It depends on the scenario um, you know, uh, being planned and, and doesn't really need a lot of explanation. You must bring your miniatures and terrain with you. Um, my top tips, based on personal experience, are prepare a list of everything that you need to bring with you. Check it before you leave, check it on arrival, check it before you pack up and go home. Um, there's always something that gets missed, so have yourself a list that you can use and tick off so you know exactly that you've got everything you need. Um, always take some spare figures, just in case something always gets damaged, and always triple check, triple check that you've got all the figures you need for the army list that, for the game that you're doing. I have before put a demo game on and missed an entire unit out, um, so it required some last minute adjustments to make the game work. Um, and then another essential, um, uh, blue tack and super glue. I always bring some because something will inevitably break. It always does. Blue tack and super glue in with your models. Now we come to the umpire's toolbox itself. Um, it doesn't have to be an actual toolbox. <laughs> um, uh, any partitioned, organised, transportable box will do. Um, for my next demo game, I am actually using a wooden toolbox. Um, uh, and, and for me, this should include some essential items. So for a start, Dice, obvious, for both sets of players, um, personal preference, different colours, um, uh, tape measures or measuring sticks, whatever the rules and so on require. Um, you're going to need pens and pencils. Always bring a load of them because you never know. There's never enough and no one else has ever got any and you'll always need some. Um, tokens and markers, again, I did a video a few weeks ago about why I prefer to use tokens and markers. So if you need those, make sure you've obviously got everything you need for the particular game you're going to play, the particular set of rules. Um, and then there's other tools, things like directional markers, um, fire arc templates, specialist dice. I really like using a laser uh, line of sight pen you know, that draws a line. Um, it ends so many arguments. Like a top tool, to be honest. Um, you know, it, it, everyone looks at a set of sit a situation again, and they they apparently can see round corners. Um, get the laser pen out. Pff, 
that's it, end of argument. It either can see or it can't. Um, so I, I, I always include that in any of my toolboxes when I'm preparing for a demo game. And then, again, more to blue tack and super glue. You can't bring enough with you. Something always breaks. Now, I nearly forgot to uh, include this uh, as an addendum to the umpire's toolbox. Is the umpire's clipboard. It's something that I try to use on a regular basis. It should include fairly essential items for your game, your demo that you're going to be running. So I always try and include a personalised and quite detailed quick reference sheet to avoid me having to flick through the rule book. I'll always bring the rule book just in case, um, but a quick reference sheet can speed the game up enormously. Um, I'll also include details of the scenario, the victory conditions, uh, maps, setup notes. Um, they're very useful obviously when you're setting up the game, but also in case you get any questions from the player. So I always have that on the clipboard. Um, I will also include detailed roster sheets, so usually when I hand out to the players I'll also have a copy for myself so that I've got a master copy of what I've given them. Um, uh, and sometimes you can write on that and uh, adjust it as the game goes along. But then the other way of doing it is a detailed record sheet. Now I often use this as you can tick off the turns, you can record victory points, record weather conditions, etc. Um, so they're all important items to keep on your clipboard. And now we come to a pet subject of mine, display material. I've often bemoaned the deficiency in table signage. Um, I, in fact, I've done a video on it before. I'll try and remember to put a link in, in the side here. Um, uh, you know, up here somewhere. Um, in my humble opinion, there are three basic elements to display material. Um, table signage must include, as a minimum, the name of the club running the demo game, the name of the game being played, the period or specific dates if applicable if it's a historical game, the rule system being used and the scale and the make and the miniatures. That basic information because that's what people want to see and when you're taking photographs of miniatures, uh, you know, taking dozens of games tables, you want to be able to take a reference photo. Um, you know, If you want your pictures to appear on other people's blogs and on, in magazines, have some display material out so that a reference photo can be taken because I stop publishing photographs of tables that I can't identify. You know, you go to Salute and there's dozens and dozens and dozens of tables and if I'm, if there's no display material, I'm not going to remember. And I don't take a notebook with me and I'm not going to be doing that. I want a reference photo. So that's a personal bugbear of mine. Um, I do make sure that there's always a bit of table signage. The second important element is a, a leaflet or a handout for the visiting public. Now, it's include all the previous information I just mentioned, but also you want a bit more historical background, a summary of the setting, a short description of the game and the rules perhaps, um, a bit about your research and your inspiration for, uh, and what sources you used, um, information about the painted miniatures, who painted them and so on, and who made the terrain, did you buy it, did you make it? Um, uh, and then obviously some contact info for your group. If your group is running a demo game, you need to be able to put your name, your group's name on there and some contact details. What is the point of doing a demo game if you're not going to try and engage with people? Um, and then I think the third important element uh, in this last category is that uh, visual enhancement is what I, I, is a rough term that I've come up for it. Something that adds impact to the display you're putting on. So um, I always try and include things like period pictures, uniform guides, um, uh, covers from books that I've used. I don't generally bring the books with me, I usually just photograph, so I use a, a, a printout page showing the, the books that I've used so that people can at least see the research material that I've, I've used for this game. Um, and if you've got access to it, artifacts, optional extras, anything like that that can add a little extra to your table's display as well as the game, because it attracts more people in, particularly when you're hoping to engage with non-war gamers and families that are coming to shows. You know, something like that is interesting to look at. And you know, and particularly artifacts are great if you're going to have kids coming around with their, their parents and so on. They're really interested in that sort of thing, and then you can get them involved in looking at the game and talking to them about the game. So I think they're those visual enhancements that you can add just for that extra oomph in your display really makes the difference. So what about you? Have you ever run a demo game and think like, I've missed something from my list? Um, or do you think I'm overthinking things? Am I overcomplicating it? Is running a demo game a lot more simple than that? As usual, I'd love to hear what you think. Um, so please leave some, uh, uh, inf some leave your ideas and your, your experiences in the comments in the conversation below or over on my blog, Big Lee's Miniature Adventures.
And of course, if you enjoyed the video, please like, subscribe and share. And if you want to keep up to date with um, all of the videos that I put out, please click the bell notification icon. So until next week, stay safe, keep gaming and of course, keep rolling high.